So I'm very glad that I was invited to the CARE conference this year to tell you a few words about the effective volunteer management, which is crucial for the work of entire organization. And the topic of my lecture is how to create a strong team of volunteers. And the lecture will be divided into two parts. The first one is the presentation. And it's going to take about half an hour. Uh, and the second part is the time for your question, which you might have to my presentation and my work. So let's start. To begin, I'd like to tell a few words about, about myself. Uh, my name is Anna Pieszała. It's hard to pronounce it. <laughs> uh, and I'm the international volunteer coordinator for Otwarte Klatki. I graduated uh, history and applied psychology. Uh, my journey with animal rights movement started in 2014 when I became a volunteer in Otwarte Klatki. Uh, at the beginning, I was engaged in many campaigns, projects and actions. And I think that this experience uh, gave me an overview to the uh, work of the whole organization. After two years, in 2016, I became local group leader and local fundraising team leader. Uh, in one year, in 2017, I became full-time employee uh, as the volunteer coordinator and work for animals became my job. Uh, that will be all about me for now. Uh, moving to the next point, I'd like to tell a few words about the structure of Otwarte Klatki in Poland. Uh, we've got 13 local groups around the whole country. You can see it on the map. Uh, we've got the groups in the biggest cities of Poland, uh, like Warsaw, Krakow, uh, Wrocław, and Poznań. Uh, and I think that uh, these are the biggest and the most active groups. Uh, every single group in our country has similar structure and similar uh, rules of work. So how does the structure of the local group uh, looks? Every local group is managed by two people. Uh, we divided the function of local coordinator into two people because every single rule here requires different set of skills and abilities. Uh, the first person is the human resources coordinator. Uh, is a person who is responsible for training of the new volunteers, introducing them to the group, and keeping the commitment on a higher level. So that requires a really good soft and interpersonal skills. Uh, the second uh, coordinator is so called by me the task coordinator. And this is a person who keeping up the deadlines and organizing meetings of the group once a week. And this is a person with, uh, with a good organize, organize, uh, organizing skills. Uh, and we've got also a uh, few more functions within the local groups. Uh, part of the functions are the temporary. As you can see at the last point, uh, for the, the example of this kind of a function might be, uh, for example, um, the, even, the the coordinator of our vegan festival. It's called Vegan Mania, and we organize it once a year in every city in Poland. Uh, but uh, the other ones are more stable, and this is the event coordinator. That's the volunteer uh, responsible for organizing event and street work actions. Local media coordinator is someone who contacts with the media and giving the interview. And uh, the last one is uh, the fundraising coordinator. This is the person responsible for the financial side of the organization. So they organize the local benefits or they are also responsible for our donation boxes in the cities. Uh, every single group uh, has from 10 to 40 people. 
uh, there's a huge amount of the people. So you may have the question right now, uh, how do I stay in touch with all the local groups in Poland? And the question, and the answer on this question is that it's possible thanks to the work with the local coordinators who are responsible for managing, manage the whole group. And we've got separate communication channel for sharing the information. Uh, on this channel, we can put some uh, advertisements that we are looking for the person to do something in the organization, or we are starting the national campaign against the company. Uh, so this is a channel uh, to stay in touch together. Um, we got also a system of the monthly conferences and calls. This is some kind, this is some kind of the group call uh, when we can discuss current issues, problems, and share the experience. A uh, very important uh, thing in every well-working group is team building and integration. That's why we organize also gatherings every half of the year uh, to know each other, to stay in touch each other, uh, to have the feeling, feeling that we are the group who work together. Uh, when there is a problem in some kind of, in one of the cities, uh, I got a system of the individual calls. When during these calls, we try to uh, solve this problem together. Sometimes I also visit the local groups to help them, uh, or just uh, for the team building and the integration. So this is the photo of my heroes. <laughs> I think that I may call uh, all these people heroes because this is uh, a photo of the local coordinators in Poland. And uh, I think that their work is the crucial for, for the entire organization. Uh, this photo was taken this year during our gathering in August. Uh, I also want to point uh, the reason why do we need the local groups in the organization. And I've written here several points, but honestly, for me, the list is endless. Uh, so the first reason is to make our welfare campaigns more, more visible in public. It's much easier to get the media attention in the smaller city than, for example, in Warsaw, which is the capital city of Poland and has a government and local celebrities in it. Uh, the second reason is to create events that make our organization more recognizable. For example, the vegan festival, we try to organize uh, the lectures, the movie screen, and uh, the local benefits. Also, uh, we've got the benefits with tattoo campaign. Um, to create more efficient campaigns focused against companies that still using KHX. Uh, that's because uh, we got, as an organization, we've got an ability to mobilize a hundred of, hundreds of people in the same time when we uh, must do the strict work actions or we start the campaign uh, against the company that still used, for example, the KHX. Uh, having uh, a national team give us a possibility uh, to find the best people to, to coordinate the task on the national level. When we see that someone do, does the great job uh, locally, then there is a big possibility that they will also do the, do the good work nationally. So that's why we find, that's the way how we find the best people to more important tasks in the organization. Uh, also, um, very important here that we've got a big area to find the people with uh, the special skills which are needed in the organization, like IT specialists or the graphic designers, and of course to have a big nationwide team. So I put here the photo uh, from our gathering. It was taken this year. 
this is the same gathering uh, in August this year. And uh, this is a third of our national team, I think. Because here on this photo, we've got about more than 100 volunteers. And in the organization, there is more than 300 of volunteers. Uh, that's a huge amount of people. So it's very uh, important here to organize our work well. And how do we do this? Thanks to the tools like Trello or Slack. And do you know any of these tools? Who knows Slack? OK, great. Do you use it in your organization? OK. And Trello, how about Trello? So I, maybe I don't have to speak too much about it. Yeah, I'm glad, very glad. Uh, I'm a really, I'm, I'm really big fan of both of, of these tools. Um, so I'm going to tell it in a few words. The Slack is a tool for communication uh, for the internal team. and. Uh, Honestly, for me, the biggest advantage of Slack is the fact that it was created for the companies. So that was the tool created for the communication, for the work communication. On the other hand, we've got Facebook, which was created for entertainment. So we cannot use the Facebook uh, to organize our work because it's not good tool for that. Uh, Slack has an option to create uh, the channels for the local groups, for the task groups, campaign groups, whatever you only want to. Uh, also an option of sending direct messages. Uh, what I really like in Slack is the searching engine. Slack has an option of searching through entire conversation and uploaded files, what is very, very helpful. And also there is an option of creating closed channels li with limited access. And this option um, is uh, very uh, needed in, for example, in the investigation group in our organization. And the second one is a Trello, is a, a tool for organizing projects. Uh, this is possible thanks to the option of assign project to one or more persons. Uh, moreover, Slack an option for dividing projects into smaller tasks with the checklist, uh, setting the deadlines, adding labels, uh, creating personal reminders and notification, and put some comments and, uh, in the cards when we got, where we got uh, the projects. But definitely this is not a tool for communication. This is only for project and work organization. Uh, moving to the next point of my presentation, I'd like to tell a few words about the recruitment process in, in our organization and how do we recruit the volunteers. We recruit volunteers by three ways. Uh, the first one is the registration form. It's the most traditional uh, way to gain some people to the organization. We've got the registration form on our website. Uh, registration form contains uh, the questions about the contact details, uh, interests, uh, skills, and also time availability. Uh, the second one is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is uh, helpful when we need to find the person with uh, the specialized skills. So I don't use it too often, but sometimes it's also a really good platform for that. And the last one is by the local events. We organize a lot of uh, events locally, as I said to you before, and uh, during our street work actions, and benefits, and uh, whatever we only do, uh, it's always good to have the registration form uh, printed and put it on our stand to give the people who want to join us and join the organization. Uh, I've divided the recruitment process into three parts. 
Uh, and uh, I'm gonna tell a few words about every of them. So the first part is filling up the form, the registration form on our website that I mentioned before. Uh, what is crucial here is to give the people as fast feedback as it's possible. Because when they fill up the, the form, they are highly motivated to do something, so they are also impatient. Uh, we give the, them the feedback with the information about the next training, and also we let them join some kind of informal group. And in this only, only one exception, it might be a Facebook, uh, we got a local groups when we shared the information about the events or something like that, but this is only for the beginning before the person uh, will come to the uh, training. Uh, the training, it's some kind of the meeting with the presentation when we share uh, the information about the organization, our values, our successes, and the groups and the campaign uh, that we currently run. And the last but not the least uh, is that implementing new people in the organization. For me, the most important part for the whole, uh, of the whole recruitment process. Uh, becoming a volunteer is something new for the big part of the people. And I've written here the main challenges concerning new volunteers that they have to face. And uh, the first uh, point is getting to know tools used in organization. That means that they have to know how to use the Slack and Trello. Without that, they won't stay in touch with the rest of the group and the rest of the team. So they have to learn at the whole beginning how to use uh, these tools. Also, volunteers. Uh, has uh, little knowledge uh, at the beginning about the campaigns, animal welfare, and animal rights movement. Uh, they don't have any organizing experience. Uh, it's like their know-how knowledge. They don't know how to organize the street work action, the event, uh, and moreover, it is connected with difficulties with searching for this information. Uh, and very, very helpful for the new people is to minimize the entry threshold. That means that we should make it easier to start work with us. And we do this by the few ways. The first one is uh, are the guardians for the new volunteers. Um, we pair the new volunteer with the more experienced uh, person in the organization. Uh, it's much easier to ask for some, some for something one person than the whole channel or the whole group of people. So this is very helpful for them at the beginning. Uh, we've got uh, the articles about the informations uh, about the campaigns and also some kind of the checklist er and articles know-how. Uh, they are on our knowledge base. It's called uh, Wiki. Open Cages is an international tool. And we've got, for example, a checklist. How to organize the tattoo benefit. And when someone uh, does something first time, then can, this person can find the article and just uh, look at the checklist, how to do this step by step. And it's very helpful uh, in that way. Uh, in our organization, we organize the tool trainings for the new people. So this is a kind of the meeting when we try to explain how the Slack and the Trello work. Uh, of course, team building. Uh, as I said to you before, the crucial thing for every well-working well -working group. So we integrate together. People must feel that they are part of the group, of the group that they, are no they know each other, and they do something together. 
Uh, there is also an option of internal trainings. We organize the training, uh, for example, how to talk to the camera. We meet together, we take the camera and put the chair in the room, and now it's your turn. You're gonna tell a few words about this and this campaign, let's start. So we organize this kind of the trainings together. It's very easy to do. And the research shows that the average time of being volunteer in non-governmental organization is one and a half year. What do you think, what is the reason for that? Any ideas? Yeah. It's a long list. <laughs> what? It's a long list. Yeah, <laughs> the long list of things, yeah, sure. Uh, but a very important factor here is the burnout effect. Uh, so, activists are often tired, especially when they don't see immediately the results of their work. Uh, that's why we should keep the inter internal motivation on the high level. The motivation is divided into external and internal. The internal is connected with material things, like a gift. When you give a, when you give a gift to someone who made a great job, it's an external motivation. And the internal motivation is something opposite to the external. Uh, and uh, also I've written here the list of the ideas how to keep up the internal motivation of the activists on the high level. And uh, the first one is to compliment people in public for the, uh, for the good work. Uh, in our organization, we've got a channel for this. we got a channel for everything, I think. <laughs> and uh, we got a channel and it's called You're the Best. And this is a great opportunity to thank someone for uh, he or her, him or her job. Uh, but on the other hand, do never ever criticize activists in public. And uh, I think that is really bad because the rest of the team might be afraid in the future to take the responsibility. So do never do this. Um, also important is to show the influence of the work in the context of the whole campaign or the whole organization. They have to know that the work matters. Um, moreover, we care about the relationships between the people. Uh, also, as, as I said to you before, uh, the team building is very important. Uh, people uh, feel better in the group and stay longer the, in the organization when they know each other and work together on the projects. And the last point is uh, the fact that we shouldn't be afraid to remove problematic and inactive people from our organization because inact there's a big possibility that be inactive people will give a really bad dynamic to the rest of the well-working people in the group. Uh, and moving to the end of my presentation, I also want to tell you a few words about the self-development and why self-development is uh, so essential uh, in our work. Uh, I think that uh, animal rights movement is as specific field of work. I mean, that is really hard to find, for example, the volunteer coordinator or uh, cage-free campaign specialist on the labor market. There is a list of things which we must learn by uh, themselves, but our own. So last, Last month, I had also example from my daily work. I, I tried to find a graphic designer and it was extremely hard. Uh, after several, several tries, I realized that it's much easier and better to buy the Udemy course for our volunteers. And uh, beca why? Because they are highly motivated to do something and they can also learn new things. So that's the win-win situation for us. Uh, 
yeah, and then of course I bought this course, this course and uh, it was done by the volunteers. Uh, we tried to make the self-development easier for our team uh, by organizing internal and external trainings that I mentioned with the example about uh, talking to the camera. Uh, we buy the Udemy courses. I would really like this uh, website and this tool. It's very helpful because our work um, is a war, is a big part of our work is uh, the work from home. We work remotely. So all kinds of these courses uh, can be done online from our home and office. Uh, we've got a strong re reading culture inside the organization. And, okay, we've got another channel. <laughs> it's called Bookworms. This is a place to share the information about the books that we've read and recommend some kind of the nice uh, articles for, for the other people in the organization. And the last point is the fact that every employee in, the, in Otwarte Klatki has special working hours for self-development. That means that we've got 10 hours every month uh, for the constant learning. So we pay our employees for learning. And to sum up my presentation, on this photo uh, is our volunteer. volunteer. This is Alan. Alan is holding the rescued fox. As, and as you can see, Alan is a superhero. Uh, the same like every person who work for the animals and like every volunteer who is the voice for the voiceless. Um, and Honestly, for me, very important in our organization is fact that our volunteers are the campaign coordinators. Our volunteers are the members of the General Assembly, which is the most decision-making make, part of the organization. So they are not only the people who stand with the leaflet. And for me, this is the key for the success. Thank you for your attention and thank you very much. And I'm waiting for the questions. Hi, thank okay. you very much for your presentation. Um, my name is Björk. I am even closer. Okay. <laughs> my name is Björk. I'm working as a local coordinator for a youth organization in Denmark. And uh, I wanted to know if you have any tips if we have, uh, like you said, inactive people or people that are not good for like uh, the group dynamic, how to you know, how to address that or how to ask them to leave and still, um, you know, keep the uh, good spirits in the organization? Um, at the beginning, it's uh, good to ask what is the reason that they are inactive because sometimes there are different situations in our lives. So uh, first of all, I always why, uh, ask about the reason. And uh, after uh, all, when someone is still inactive, I write the message and with the explanation why, the, why being active is in the group is very important and why do we need only the active volunteers in the organization. Uh, so for me, it's good to explain and be fair just uh, with the feedback. Also, what is important here is to give the feedback that uh, they can 
back to the organization. They are still uh, very welcome here. So when something will change in the future, there is no problem to come back to us. So how, how do inactive people, um, I guess, mess up the dynamic? Why is it bad to have a lot of inactive people around? For example, when we've got 50 people on Slack and someone asked the question and uh, I don't know, who can do this and this? And all the time, uh, only four people answer. And we've got the situation when the new volunteers come to the group, they see that they don't have to be an active people to stay here. Okay, is it a good answer? Okay. Hi. Hey. Thomas is my name. Um, I was wondering if you have any um, experience or ideas of how to get people to use these different tools because my experience is that they're already on Facebook mm -hmm. and they really want to use Facebook um, but it's really hard getting people to use other platforms. Uh, it took us about two years to take the whole organization to the Slack <laughs> so it wasn't uh, an easy process. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the most active people in the organization uh, went to Slack. Uh, so the general assembly, the campaign coordinators, the local group coordinators. So that was the first uh, point when the other people in our team saw that uh, they have to be there because uh, the really important things happen in the Slack. Um, there were some kind of the situation when people uh, didn't want to go there. Uh, I had the situation when the whole local group protested. And uh, well, the, the main reason for that, it was that they won't install the Another tool that they use slave, uh, Facebook in work. Uh, what? <laughs> in work. And uh, if you have a, a question or you want something from me, then you can write or, or call. And I think it's really unfair be, to the rest of the team because that makes a situation when someone wants something, then it takes this person much more time to contact these people. And I don't know. This person might, uh, during these five minutes, write the free comments uh, on the uh, on the on the on the Facebook to the uh, company. Okay, <laughs> so easy word uh, to the company that we run the campaign against. So. Uh, when I've got the situation that the 80% of the group said no, then I think, s said to all of them, thank you. We don't need this kind of the people in the organization because it's the unfair to the rest. And uh, I took these five people on the Slack and built the team uh, with all of them. Hi, my name is Evgeny. I'm uh, from Germany. I'm active with the Tierschutzpartei, as an animal prote protection party in Germany. Thanks for your talk. I was wondering, we often have the problem that uh, many of our tasks are kind of, um, yeah, good to do on the computer alone when people are home to search for some information which is relevant to, uh, um, to prepare some texts to prepare some uh, images. And of course, uh, it would be easier to motivate people doing this if we meet it up and said, okay, we are working on this project or that project together and we meet this day, this time, and people will come and then they will, would be more motivated to work on it if compared to if they were alone at home. Because, uh, other, yeah, this is my impression work, like homework, is not done often. 
but meeting is also very um, difficult sometimes because uh, if so I'm from Berlin, it's a big city, people are living in different areas, it takes half an hour to go somewhere, half an hour to go back, you need to find a place, you need to find a time when all the people have time. So maybe you have similar experiences and have some tips on this, how to, how to implement a good, so of course it's good if everyone is on trail, for instance, but still, I don't know, I also have this, uh, this experience from myself. If someone is there and tells me, now we're doing this and that, then I'm much more motivated than if I have to schedule this on my own. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the meetings in the re real life are very important, so maybe you can organize it, but not so often. And um, the potential solution for this problem might be a system like we've got with our local coordinators, maybe the group calls. And during this call, we ca you can work together with uh, these people on one project or on one task, and maybe that would be the solution. Some kind of a system of the regular meetings online. Because it's still you still work in the group in that way. Any other questions? And in working in groups uh, like live, how do you manage the meeting atmosphere? Or is there like a leader in the in the group when you meet, and it's like more like a more, more like a strict like meeting? You just work on work, and then sort of uh, you know off topic talking, and you know how to manage the live meeting and your workflow and everything. Um, we meet. Uh in more informal places uh, when we get some coffee, where we get, can get some coffee or eat something together. But the uh, meeting of the group is more like formal. We discuss the task, uh, current projects, and give the task to the people. Uh, so also it's a good way to sum up uh, everything what's happening with the whole group. But after that, uh, we often go to integrate together. So we go somewhere for a beer or something like that, just to talk about uh, our personal life, personal cases, and also the off topic about the organization. Uh, as I said you before, for me, it's very important here that we spend time together, not only work together. Again? The leader of the meeting? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, we, after the meeting, we write the short sum up. But every, we've got the list of the people in the group, and uh, every time a different person is responsible uh, for uh, writing this sum up and uh, take care about the meeting. So I think it's divided into the whole group, this, this responsibility. And it's a good option because everyone is engaged in, in, in that way. Oh, thank you. Can you uh, give a case about problematic people and about working with them in Slack or somewhere? Um, like the examples of the people who are problematic for me. Uh, how did I do? <laughs> like uh, I wrote the message, like it's always very polite kind of message with the explanation, what is the reason. And of course, before that, I always try to give the chance to the people and say, where is the main problem? Uh, it's, it, it doesn't look like I throw away every, everyone without uh, the message and or any contact before. So, um, Sometimes uh, we've got also the problematic people who make some conflicts in the group. I think it's also the situation when uh, it makes the real bad group dynamic. So it's not only about the slack. 
I'm quite sure that you had the situation with the conflict people also uh, in your organizations. Okay. So, any other questions? Hi, hey, hey. um, I'm Ed. I coordinate uh, Bristol Open Cages. Uh, in, we have people from like quite different like ideological standpoints, um, and they've come at animal activism from very different like life experiences. And um, I wondered if you've got any tips or experiences of that in your groups or any uh, any advice. Um, often we had really long discussions during the integration <laughs> after the meetings, uh, but we also have some books um, which are correlated with uh, the values of our organization on the channel Bookworm about the pragmatism and uh, about the animal rights movement. We try to share the books and the articles, so maybe it's also the good way to give some knowledge to them. Like, I can also send you, because, send you that list, because part of them, uh, a really big part of them is in English. And, uh, what I also want to add uh, is I can fully recommend you the book How Organizations Develop Activists. So that is very helpful and uh, the explanation of group management, of the whole process of group management uh, were very, very helpful for, for my work and for understanding some kind of the group process. Um, I have one question about uh, new volunteers. Uh, we recently organized one event. Uh, it was like a lecture with three people, and uh, one of our uh, volunteers, it was her first time organizing that big event, uh, and uh, she had problem with one of new, I mean, it's not a problem, but uh, happening with one of new volunteers. Uh, that new volunteer was in charge to, for discussion to bring microphones. And uh, when the lecture stopped and when the questions should uh, begin, uh, she was just uh, talking with somebody, like, I don't know about what, but she wasn't there and working her thing. And then one of the persons from the uh, like a place where we organized the event, just hop in and then she started to do that. And uh, that's like uh, not their job, it's the job of our volunteers. I mean, it's a small thing, but it is her first uh, responsibility. It is yeah. a small one, but the first one. So what uh, do you suggest to do in those kind of situations when new volunteer accept the responsibility and then just say oh, and go somewhere else. It's kind of really tricky. She said that I wasn't talking with somebody and stuff like that. So what's your uh, advice? Uh, I would like to talk with this person separately. Uh, I mean, on the private message or face to face and explain the problem and ask about the reason of that behavior. Uh, when, we, when we've got a problem with someone, uh, the crucial thing is to talk about it face to face, uh, explain what's the problem, uh, find a solution, and um, as I said you in this lecture, never talk about it in public. Uh, and for me, like, I wouldn't uh, throw away this person or um, on, or I think that I would rather uh, 
see what is the reason of the situation and after all try to give her the smaller task and uh, just to see if she is irresponsible enough. And if this situation will happen again in the future, then I will, will think about this person uh, and her work in the organization. Because it, it's a real problem that when we got the people uh, that we can we can't rely on, yeah. That we can can't that we can't rely on. So I just have one more question. Um, do you have uh, any place online or any application where you keep all your contacts, like all the volunteer information and? Uh, if you don't, do you think this would be a useful thing to do? You think it would be worth the time to make such a database, I guess, mm -hmm. of contacts or volunteers? Um, the registration form uh, is connected with uh, some kind of the spreadsheet, the online spreadsheet. So I've got the, the data of the potential volunteers in this kind of the spreadsheet. And um, the other uh, contact details are on the Slack. I mean, I don't have a separate file for this because everything like the email, uh, the telephone number, the working group, the, uh, the campaign, everything we've got in the description on the Slack. Hey, uh, I'd like to ask uh, how, uh, when we were starting out and you were still a small organization, how did you get to a critical mass of volunteers? Like how, uh, like if there's a smaller organization that put to with, I don't know, twice as many volunteers as they have now, what strategy should they use? I'm not quite sure did I understand the question. Can... Um, I think that it was uh, Dobrusia's work. Uh, at the beginning, she organized the meetings in the small, in the whole cities, with uh, also some kind of the presentation about the organization and try to encourage people uh, to join us. And uh, when she had a group of the people, she tried to find the local team leader. And it's really hard at the beginning because uh, often you don't know all these people. Uh, so this is your intuition. I'm in the situation right now when I can visit the local group, know everyone, and find the best person, in my opinion, who can be the leader. But at the beginning, like sometimes it's, uh, you might have some mis mis mistakes, and it's okay because uh, uh, at the beginning there is no possibility to know all the people. Uh, but it took us sometimes uh, about the about the five years. We've got also a group uh, which are which, which doesn't work anymore. Um, uh, and I remember that free groups uh, are not active right now. We uh, doesn't have we had more groups than now. Um, but sometimes I think uh, that it's good to think about the things which are cost effective and worthy of our time. So when I had uh, one group which didn't work good, just I let it go because I had the things which were very, very important, like our movement in the Eastern Europe. Is there any last question? So, if not, thank you very much for your great presentation.